Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It's the month of July, and we're still learning about faith, and that's trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Coming up in Story Lab, they're going to tell you the story about Paul when he was in jail, and he wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus. See you when this is done. What's the best gift you've ever received? Maybe you walked outside on your birthday to find a brand new bike with no training wheels. Or like me, your parents got you guitar lessons so you could learn to play your favorite songs. Maybe you got to take a trip someplace awesome. Wow. Your favorite gift might even have been a video game console or the chance to spend the day with your favorite person. These are all fantastic presents, but eventually things break and the fun experiences are over. You have to go back to everyday life and wait forever until Christmas or your birthday comes around again. But. There's one gift you never have to wait for. One gift you can open every single day. In Ephesians, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Faith in God is an incredible gift from God. When you have faith, you know that God is always with you, even in tough situations. When you have faith, you learn to trust God for wisdom as you walk through your day. And when you have faith, you know that God has promised to make everything right in the end for those who follow Jesus. When you choose to open God's amazing gift of faith, you begin to live with more hope and show more love. Then others can see God at work in you. That's why making a move in faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
Hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of God's most amazing gift to us. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. I have never seen the country of Greece myself, but my aunt just sent me something really cool from Athens. Is that the, uh, the, um, uh, oh, I know this. The, oh, the Parthenon, part of the Acropolis, right? It sure is. Oh, let's take a closer look. Ready, set, move. The Acropolis in Athens, Greece was built centuries before Jesus on a rocky outcrop overlooking the sea. You know, this is a very awesome gift. I know, right? Oh, your aunt dedicated some serious shipping weight to this. Yep. But it's got nothing on the real Acropolis. This building, the Parthenon, uses 22,000 tons of marble. Whoa, how do they hold all that up? The ancient Greeks used Doric columns for support. These columns are wider at the base, tapering up to a narrower top. They hold up beams to transfer weight. I want a closer look. Do you think we can take a trip to Athens? Not in the budget. But these are... Oh, cup game! A little focus here. Cups, Athens, columns? I know how we can create our own columns right here. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's, Let's make, make it. it! Here's your column. Wide at the bottom, narrower at the top. I don't know, it looks like a pretty pathetic column to me. See? Columns aren't meant to work alone. They have to share the weight. Step one, place six cups in two even rows on the floor. Step two, place a tray or a piece of cardboard on top of the cups. Step three, step on the tray. Uh, you first, architect. Check it out! Whoa, you crushed it! I mean, you crushed it by not crushing it. Your turn. Hmm. Can we take it up a level? Let's find out. Okay, you ready? Yep. Whew. Stepping up. You don't really need the extra height. How high can we go? What do you think we need for this? Step ladder, definitely. Gotcha. Whew. You ready, Zeke? Go for it. Get behind me, please. Just... Whoa! I think I can see Athens from up here. Speaking of which, our story today has a letter written to a church right across the sea from Athens. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Ephesians, which is a letter written by Paul to the new believers in Ephesus. But before Ephesians, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The Apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles to tell about Jesus and started many new churches, including the one in Ephesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, call me Brian. So, just as the name says, Paul wrote the letter of Ephesians to the church in, you guessed it, Ephesus. Now at that time, Ephesus was one of the greatest seaports in the world. It had grown up on the Aegean Sea right at the mouth of the Caister River. The city was at the hub of several major roads too. All of this meant that the people of Ephesus came from a wide variety of backgrounds and cultures. And the church in Ephesus reflected that. Jewish people and non-Jewish people, rich people and poor people together. 
they were learning what it meant to follow Jesus. Now, Paul had twice been to Ephesus. The first time was just a short visit, but the second time, he stayed for more than two years. During this time, many people became believers and were baptized. Several years after his stay in Ephesus, Paul was arrested for preaching about Jesus and ended up imprisoned in Rome. But he didn't just sit around and let that time go to waste. The church at Ephesus was still on his heart. So, he wrote them a letter. I am sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are faithful. Through his letter, Paul wanted the believers to know that they were chosen by God through the work of Christ and adopted as sons and daughters. In chapter 2, Paul writes, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do, it's God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Okay, there is so much packed into these two verses. So let's start with the word grace. Now we hear that tossed around a lot. You might have a, a grace period before getting fined on your overdue library book. Or maybe your dance teacher wants you to move with grace. Maybe your family says grace before a meal. But this grace, the kind of grace Paul writes about, means simply unmerited favor. Grace is getting something you don't deserve, something you didn't earn. You have nothing to do with it, except that someone chose you. You might think of it this way. Let's say you're at a big state fair with all kinds of awesome rides and games, but you don't have any tickets. All you can do is walk around and watch. You're left out of the fun. Then, out of nowhere, someone who's leaving the fair offers you all of their remaining tickets. <laughs> you didn't ask for these tickets. You didn't pay a penny. But now, those tickets are yours. And you're about to have the time of your life. That sense of surprise and excitement, that's what it can feel like when somebody gives you a wonderful, unexpected gift. That's grace. And when it comes to the gift of salvation, that someone is God. You see, every single one of us has turned away from God, starting with the very first people. We've all done wrong things, and the consequences of that sin is separation from God. But Jesus changed all that. He took our consequences so that we can be saved, so that we don't have to be separated from God. Salvation starts in the heart of God. It's an outpouring of God's deep, deep love for us. Now God offers salvation to each one of us as grace, a complete and total gift. You might picture it like this. Say you're on a boat. You spot a school of colorful fish in the water below. So you lean way over the rail to see, so far over uh, that you lose your balance and fall in. You can't swim well. And you're desperate to keep your head above water. You gasp for air. But just as you think, you can't hold on any longer. The captain tosses out a life ring. Whew. Now you got something to hold on to. You're going to make it. Even though you didn't do a thing to deserve it or earn it, your only job is to grab that life ring and hold on tight. Now it's tempting to think that there's something we can do to make us more deserving of God's gift, like, uh, like going to church praying a lot, doing good stuff. And yeah, those are all really great things, but not one of them will help you earn life with God forever. We need God to do a work in our hearts. God gives us the grace to believe in who Jesus is and what he did for us. And only then are we able to put our faith in Jesus and choose to follow him. It's an incredible gift, one worth hearing again. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. The most awesome thing is that God offers this amazing gift to everyone. It doesn't matter where you're from, how you speak, what you look like, what you've done. God's grace is for you. Jesus is for you. Salvation 
is for you. So is that the end? Well, it's really more of a wide open door than an ending. You know, I've heard these verses before and it's really easy to just brush right past them. But if you actually stop and think about them, it's just, wow. It's truly amazing. So, what's, what's our part in the story? Salvation is a wide open invitation to step into God's story. God made each of us in God's very own image to play a unique part in this epic adventure. And the first step is simply to believe in who Jesus is and what he's done for us. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic moment. And you won't suddenly magically have a life with no problems. Right, but over time, God will show you more and more about Jesus. God will give you grace to turn away from the wrong things you've done and choose to follow Jesus. You can simply talk to God in a quiet place on your own. But it's also a great idea to talk and pray with someone who's following Jesus for a while, like a parent or a small group leader. Yeah, and as you begin to experience God's amazing gift of salvation, you can share it with others. Because Jesus is for everyone. Bye, George, I think you've got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus is a gift for everyone. And my gift to you is how to play the cup game. <sighs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time. Okay, show me how. All right. Simple. Perfect. So grace cannot be earned. Jesus is a gift for everyone. I'll see you guys next week.